Are you a smart Christian? Can a smart Christian read this? Or what about this? What exactly is a smart Christian? 1 Peter 3.15 says, Sanctify the Lord Christ in your heart and always be ready to give a defense or an answer to anyone who asks of the hope that is in you. But does that mean that a smart Christian has to know everything, all the answers to all the questions? Well, no, because who knows all the answers to all the questions? But should a smart Christian know some of the answers to some of the questions, the answers to the more important questions, to core essential Christian doctrine? Well, sure. But does that mean that a smart Christian should know a lot? And then what is a lot? Does it mean that a smart Christian should know Greek or a smart Christian should know Hebrew? Well, no, but it does help, doesn't it? What about all the different studies, all the different ologies? You know, soteriology, eschatology, ecclesiologies, all the different doctoral statements that there are to know, all the different ways to formulate scriptures. What about knowing what some of the earlier church fathers wrote or some people a few centuries later wrote. Is that necessary? Well, no. If you look around on social media or anywhere else, you're going to find a lot of people with a lot of different interpretations of this scripture. And if you're not careful, you might find yourself thinking, well, I don't know enough or I'm not as smart as them. Or in some cases, you might realize that you probably are because it doesn't take a lot to put your opinions out. All it takes is some time and a camera. When you watch some of these different videos, have you seen some of the things that people have said? As a matter of fact, have you even seen some of the comments in the videos? There are people who simply want to attack you or a particular doctrine just because they know nothing else. They don't understand how to formulate an opinion or they have no desire in formulating a godly or doctrinally strong opinion. When you engage certain people, oftentimes you will be hit back with an insult. There are people who know nothing but how to throw an insult. And when you ask them to give an actual response, a doctrine response, they can't. A smart Christian needs to be able to intelligently navigate himself or herself through the Bible. I don't mean just reading it and then giving an opinion, but I mean actually assessing what's being stated, why it's been stated, and then how does it apply. The Bereans were called more noble of character because why they actually went back and took what Paul stated and it, and compared it to the scriptures. That's what a smart Christian would do. Now, in saying that a smart Christian needs to understand their limitations, a smart Christian needs to understand that he or she is fallible. In other words, we can and oftentimes do make mistakes. A smart Christian also understands that others are the exact same way. And so therefore, a smart Christian will not only know his limitations, but also others and respect others as well. A smart Christian has to keep all this in mind when disagreeing with others because a smart Christian knows that you can disagree with others while at the same time being godly in your disagreement. To be a smart Christian, you absolutely have to be mature, mature in your thinking as well as in your behavior, in your thinking and behavior towards believers, as well as your thinking and behavior towards non-believers, including people who you disagree with. And along those lines, a smart Christian looks for opportunities to see where he or she may be wrong. As a matter of fact, would even look to embrace those opportunities. Why? Because one, you find out something new, which is a good thing. But two, it keeps you humble. It keeps you from the burden of thinking that you are the be all to end all or you are the one that knows it all. Now, along those lines, if you want me or someone else to know what you know or to believe what you believe or to see your point, then you necessarily have to speak to me in a way that is not insulting, not condemning, not condescending. Because after all, if you attack me or attack someone else, the natural inclination is for that person to be defensive. And a defensive person will not hear what you're trying to say. So a smart Christian understands how he should speak to someone because a smart Christian realizes that the goal is not just to say what I want to say, but to have understood what I'm saying, if it is indeed the truth. So a smart Christian necessarily tries to effectively communicate, communicate the gospel, communicate an understanding of certain doctrines. A smart Christian understands that he should do his very best one to communicate to others, but also be able to be communicated or spoken to by other people who disagree. So how does a person become a smart Christian anyway? Well, obviously, by looking at this channel. 
No, obviously I'm joking. But consider this, the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian is both of them sin. Both of them make silly mistakes, errors, things they both know better and would even wish that they don't do those things. The things they want to do, they don't do. The things they wish to stop doing, they continue to do. That's present in both the Christian and the non-Christian. And so the difference between the Christian and the non-Christian is that the Christian realizes that they're sick. The Christian realizes that he needs help and the Christian realizes where to go to get the help. And then on top of that, the difference between the Christian and the non-Christian is that the Christian places faith in where help is actually offered. That is in Christ. And so the difference between the Christian and the smart Christian is the smart Christian always remembers, remembers that he is always in need of help. The smart Christian realized that I might be making a mistake. Let me always go back and double check. As a matter of fact, even once I think that I know it, I'll keep researching. I'll keep studying to make sure because I might be wrong. A smart Christian will not rely on their feelings. As a matter of fact, oftentimes will even deny what they think makes sense. If the scripture says something and it doesn't quite make sense, it doesn't mean that I've got to change what it what it states in order to make sense for me. No, the scriptures are true. My understanding might take a little time to get there. And so whatever God says is true, even or irrespective of what I think or if it makes sense. Having that sort of understanding, that sort of disposition, that sort of humility is at the root of what a smart Christian is, because at the root of being a smart Christian is humility. A smart Christian must always be humble, humble in how he looks at the scriptures and how humble he is in how he deals with other believers as well as non-believers. Being a smart Christian is not about what you know or how much you know, although that is important, but being a smart Christian first stems from who you know, that's Christ, and then recognizing that there are a lot that we don't know, but we navigate, we work through the scriptures to try to learn as much as we can. Why? Not for head knowledge, not for uh, our own pride, but so that we would get close to him. And a smart Christian will always want to bring someone else along, someone else who doesn't know along on this journey of becoming a better Christian, a more humble Christian, a more loving Christian. That is what a smart Christian is.